Good morning, and welcome to the Greater St. James Amy Church, where the pastor is the Reverend Archie Fair. My name is Annie Hatcher, and I am a member of the uh, Sanctuary Choir. May your souls be encouraged and your faith be enlightened as we enter into our service, and may God bless you. just to say thank you, to honor you and to glorify you because you are God and besides you there is no other. You are the Alpha and Omega, you are the beginning and the end, you are the first and the last. God, you are El Elyon, the most high God, the first cause of everything. And Father God, we come now bowing before the throne of grace, first and foremost, asking forgiveness of our sins that we have committed in the sight of thee and in the sight of man. We ask that you forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, we ask that you forgive us as a nation, God as we continue to sin before you daily, Lord God. But in the midst of it all, God, you're still blessing us. And so we just want to say thank you, Lord. We just honor you on today. This, Lord, this first Sunday in September, Lord, we honor you. We give you praise, glory, and honor, Father God. For in the midst of all that we are going through in this world right now, we know, God, that you are still in control. For your word said, God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I understand, Father God, that our situations may change, but Lord, you remain the same. So we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for being our keeper. We thank you for being our provider, Lord God. We thank you for being our shelter. We thank you, Father God, for covering us. As we go through this pandemic, Lord God, with so much going on, we say thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah right now, God. And Lord God, we just stop now just to pray for all of our brothers and sisters who are facing difficulties right now, Lord God. Those that are going through, those that are suffering with the coronavirus, Lord God. There is so many, God. But I know, God, that you know all about it. And Father God, sometimes we say, Lord, go over here and Lord, go over there. And God, you say to us, pray for each other. 
reach out to each other. Father God, we say thank you. Thank you for keeping us in the midst of all that we see going on. We pray now, Father God, for our brothers and sisters that are sick in the hospitals, Lord God, those that are in convalescent homes, Lord God, those that are sick at home, Lord God. And Lord, what did we say for the sin sick, Lord? Those that still have not yet accepted you as their Lord and Savior, God, with so much going on and lives are being shot down, dear God. Policemen are killing our young black men at every chance that they get, Lord God. Uh, we pray, dear God, for your protection, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for the president of these United States of America, Lord God. For your word said we are to pray for those that are in authoritative positions, Lord God, that we may be able to live at peace with one another. And sometimes, Father God, it seems the more we pray, the more the enemy kicks up. But in spite of it all, God, we know that you've got it all in control. All you ask us to do is remain faithful to you. Keep holding on to your unchanging hands. And then, Lord, we ask your blessings upon every pastor, dear God, and their families, Lord. God, we ask your blessings upon every bishop, every elder, Lord God. We ask your blessings, God, upon all of our stewards and our trustees and our missionaries and our YPDers, Lord God. We ask your blessing, dear God. We just want to say thank you. Sometimes, God, we don't even know what to pray for. We don't even know what to ask for, God. But you know. You know what we stand in need of, dear God. So we ask that you would bless us according to your riches in glory, dear God. And Father God, we just ask, dear God, that you look down on our young people, dear God. Look down on those that are going back to school on this week, this coming week, Lord God. We ask that you would just look down on the teachers, Lord God, the principals, Lord God, the coaches, Lord God. We just ask that you just bless God like only you can. Oh God, we just, we just say thank you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, for those lives that have ended with gunshots by the policemen's Lord, I pray, God, I pray that they knew who you were. Because we realize, Father God, this is not our home. We didn't come to stay. We don't know how we're going to leave, God. But Lord, as your word says, we are to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord God. I pray, dear God, for those that don't know you, that they will accept you into their hearts, dear God. Help them to realize, dear God, that you hold the power of life in your hands, dear God. So we just ask that you bless them, Lord. Keep them and those on their jobs, Lord. Those that are working and having to leave their children at home, dear God. Please watch over them, Lord. God, we just honor you, and we just give you praise, God, for who you are and what you're doing, even in the midst of all the turmoil. We honor you on this morning, Lord God. We say thank you because we are yet alive to lift up your name one more time in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the redeem of the Lord say amen, amen, and amen. Bless you, Lord God. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading for this morning is coming from Psalms 121 and its entirety. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. 
My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Our New Testament reading is coming from Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 8. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. And behold, certain of the scribes, said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that ye man know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto them, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Save the date. We will be celebrating our pastor and first lady's fifth anniversary on September 13th, 2020. Can you believe it's been five years since they've been with us? To God be the glory. So greater St. James, let's show our love and appreciation by honoring them with a parade. This parade will begin at 11 a.m. sharp. So please be in the church's parking lot and in place by 10.30 a.m. You don't want to miss it, so we'll see you there. Thank you. Oh, we'll see. 
and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Our great is our God. for this wonderful first Sunday. A Sunday, a day that we reflect on what God did through his son, Jesus Christ. There is a word from the Lord this morning and is found in the gospel of Matthew chapter nine and starting at verse one. Jesus stepped into the boat and crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought a man who was paralyzed laying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. 
At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up and take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home. And when the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe. And they praised God who had given such authority to man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I want us to pay our attention again to verse 4. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk. Verse 6 says, But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up and take your mat and go home. Verse 6 says again, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Just for a little while this morning, our subject is, he sees the greatest needs. He sees the greatest needs. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father God, that you've allowed us to return to the house of prayer one more time. Lord God, we understand and know not anything great or good that we have done, but it was your grace and your mercy that spared us one more time. And Lord God, we thank you for this waiting congregation, for we know that they're waiting on a word from you. So Lord God, as I decrease, I ask that you increase, hide me behind your cross, so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be accepted unto thee. For it is in Jesus' name in which we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. He sees our greatest needs. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 9 opens up with Jesus getting out of the boat. and Going over to the other side into a city called Capernaum. This city was a wealthy city. It was there where they did trade and they did fishing and it, it had many cultures came to there. Art, political, financial. And so it was like a melting pot of people. And oh, what a great stage Jesus had to proclaim the gospel. What a great stage Jesus had to let those around who did not know about him, who did not know about life and death, but here is our master. Here is our Lord. As he gets out of the boat, the Bible lets us know that there are those who bring a man who was paralyzed laying on a mat. Now, 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 there's three or four things that I want to lift out of this text and I'll, I'll be out of your way. I want you to look at the text closely. The Bible says... That when Jesus saw the man bringing the paralyzed man on the mat, the text says that Jesus saw their faith. Oh yes, church, I, I had to stop right there at the very beginning of the text. The Bible said that Jesus saw their faith. It did not say about anything about the man who was paralyzed faith, but it said about the, his friends and those who brought him to Jesus. He said about their faith. Oh, oh, yes, I, I want us to understand what is going on in the text. The Bible lets us know that Jesus recognized the faith of those who brought the man to him. Oh, I want you to know and understand that this morning that, that all of us, every last one of us, are here because somebody prayed for us. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Isn't it amazing that somebody else's faith can get you to Jesus? 
Oh, I've got friends, but I want to understand and know that when I go through trouble, get me to Jesus. That's why you got to be careful about who you surround yourself with. Make sure you're around those that have wise counsel. Make sure you're around those who know the Lord so that when you're in trouble, they'll know how to take you to Jesus. Again, the text says, their faith. Oh, over and over and over in the Bible, we have an examples of those who had such great faith that it covered even their family. I want to say this, and I want us to understand what I'm trying to say this morning. There are those that their faith is so great that God will cover a whole family because of their faith. I want to, I want, I want to say that one more time. You can be in a house where there's 15 people. And 14 are not doing the right thing. 14 are not living right. 14 are not talking right. But if there's one blood-washed believer in the house, I've seen God cover that house with grace and mercy because of one blood-washed believer. Oh, if you don't believe me, ask Noah. The Bible said that Noah built an ark for the saving of his family. Oh, this one righteous person can change the direction of a generation. If you don't believe me, how about Abraham, the father of our faith? He said, now Abraham, take your people and go to the land and I will bless them. If you don't believe me, how about Rahab, the harlot, who there she, because of who she was, she saved the spies and they said, when the wall falls, Rahab and your family will survive. Well, if you don't believe me, how about Paul and that Roman centurion who let them go? Paul says, no, don't kill yourself. We are all here. And the Roman centurion said, what must I do to be saved? And the Bible says, because he got saved, he went home and his whole house gets saved. I want to tell somebody. I want to tell somebody this morning, if you got one blood washed believer in your house, it can change hexes. It can change anything that comes against you. You don't have to worry about no suit saying. You don't have to worry about no witch. But if it's one blood washed believer, all the blood that flows from Emmanuel veins will stop anything, will block anything. I'm glad this morning that it was a blood washed believers in my house. Oh yes, oh yes. Jesus said, I see the faith here of these men. It did not say anything about the man on the mat. Oh yes, some of us here right now, because somebody prayed for us, the faith of your mother, the faith of your father, who prayed you through the situation when you didn't walk right, when you didn't talk right, when you didn't act right. Somebody, their faith, mothers at the altar, fathers at the altar, their faith got you to Jesus. Oh, yeah, so number one, number one, number one is faith. He saw the greatest need. Our greatest need is we need faith. In a time like this, in the midst of this pandemic, we need faith in Jesus Christ. Look at the text. Look at the text. The Bible says the first thing Jesus said to the man, that your sins are forgiven. Number two, forgiveness from Jesus Christ. See, we must, we must, I want to make us understand, we must be careful not to concentrate on the power that God has just to heal bodies. But it's more important that we concentrate on the power that he has to heal spiritual things. Yes, before he could deal with anything physical, he wanted to make sure he deal with those spiritual. Because this man had a problem. His problem was physical and spiritual. Physical, you could see that he was paralyzed. But spiritually, he did not understand the power and the glory of who Jesus Christ was. Oh, how many times in our life that we have been sick spiritually and physically. 
until you know Jesus for yourself. You're sick spiritually. Many a times, many a times, when we go through what we go through, it's not because we don't know enough or have enough, it's because we don't know Jesus enough. Paul says in his writing that I will give all everything up. Everything is like sheep dung to the knowledge and the wisdom of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus was more concerned about the mind's spirit. Oh, I want to say that one more time. Jesus was more concerned about the mind's spirit. What need it is to be able to walk and you don't know Jesus? Whatever it is to be to be able to run and jump and leap if you don't know Jesus? Whatever it needs to be able to, to speak and you don't speak the words of Jesus? Whatever, whatever it means that you have hands and not work for Jesus? What it means you have feet and not, and not go to work for the master? I heard my grandmama say, only, I said only, what you do for Christ shall last. And so number two, he forgave his sins. And I want you to look at the text. The Bible said those who were watching said he is blaspheming. Who is this man who can forgive sins? I want you to understand something and hear me real good. When God bless you, when God heals you, when God delivers you, there's always going to be some naysayers around. When God sets you free, there's always going to be some naysayers around. But I want you to know and understand, don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about those who snicker and talk and laugh. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about the enemy. But do like Jesus said, pray for those who talk about you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Because I want you to understand, every now and then, it is your enemies that keep you working. It is your enemies that keep you praying. It's your enemies that keep you singing Zion song. If they had not pressed up against you, if they had not fight against you, you maybe you wouldn't have seen Christ in the way you see Christ. Every now and then, I thank my enemies uh, for fighting against me. I thank my enemies for talking against me because it makes me go down on my knees and talk to my master and search for Jesus that I may walk right, uh, that I may seek the glory of the God every now and then for the Bible lets us know sure they will try to come against you sure they will bring weapons against you sure they will form a weapon against you but I came by to let you know oh it will not huh? I said it will not huh? I said it will not huh? prosper against a blood washed believer oh yes oh yes number one is faith Number two was the forgiveness, but all oh, number three was the strife that came against him. Oh, on this earth, you're going to have some folk come against you. I came by to let you know that for the minute you say, for God I live and for God I die, all the hellhounds will be on your trail. But I came by to let you know you got one that protect you, <laughs> one that's right by your side. For the Bible lets us know that he will protect us from danger seen and unseen. So I came by to tell somebody this morning, don't worry about who likes you and who don't like you. Just go to sleep and let the Lord, the Bible lets us know our God never sleeps nor slumbers. And so since he's awake, I want to say this real good now. And since he's awake all night and all day, there is no need for you to stay awake all night. Just rest yourself in his bosom. Rest yourself in his favor. Rest yourself in his peace. Rest yourself in his joy. Yes, yes, yes. Here they were. They were more worried about protocol than they were worried about this man being healed. Oh, how often do we see that? We're not worried about what we should worry about, but we are more concerned about protocol. We're more concerned about what is the discipline. But I came by to let you know 
that Jesus, that Jesus, I said, I said, I said, I said, Jesus, he says that the spiritual is more important than the physical. Bible, the Bible lets us know that here they were. They were the teachers of the law. I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. I came by one more time to let you know. Don't know the law so much and not know the Lord. Uh, plenty of folk may know the law, but they don't know the Lord. What I'm trying to say is get a relationship with the master. Get a relationship with him so that when your time comes, he can say, well done, our good and faithful servant. Uh, he needs to know your name. And so, and so the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, Jesus told the man, he told the man, take up your mat and walk. He said, take your mat and go home. I want you to look at the text. The Bible said that he healed the man and told the man, take your mat and go home. And the text says that the people saw the man take his mat and they were filled with awe. And they began to praise God who had given Jesus such authority. Oh, and this is point number four. That asks why I praise him. I praise him because he saw a greater need. I praise him because he saw what mankind needed. I praise him. Because it was not, I, I, I don't really need a car. I, I, I can make it with a little raggedy car. I praise him because he saw the greater need. Some folk think it's a car that they need. Some folk think there's a house that they need. Some folk think they need more money. Some folk think they need more degrees. But I came by to let you know. Then my God, I said my God, I said my God saw the greater need. And he sent his son Jesus the Christ 2,000 years ago and he said to Mary he said Mary you are going to bore son and he's going to save his people from their sins or your greatest need is not a car your greatest need is not a house. Your greatest need is not money. Your greatest need is not a degree. Your greatest need is a savior. Oh, that's why I celebrate him. That's why I worship him. Because he's worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy to be, to be praised. Because early one morning, he touched my heart. He touched my soul. He moved me down on the inside. And every now and then, I can feel him moving. Moving. I said I can feel him moving down on the inside. I'll praise him. I said I'll praise him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Because 42 he came through 40 and two generations. 2,000 years ago he died on Calvary's cross. But early, I said early on that third day morning he got up. He got up. He got up with all power in his hands. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father God Almighty interceding for me and you that is our greatest need we need a savior we need a savior America needs a savior our country needs a savior our city needs a savior our state needs a savior you need a savior in your heart in your mind oh I thank him I praise him I praise him anybody know that he's worthy I said he's worthy I said he's worthy to be praised. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How great is need. He saw it. How great is need is the Savior. Oh, that's the only reason I came by this morning to tell somebody about Jesus. Our greatest need is the Savior. So if there be one this morning that does not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, 
Oh, give your life to Jesus. Sure, you may have material things, but what you need is the Savior. I can remember when Peter and John told this man, silver and gold I, I don't have, but such as I do have I give unto you. And his name is Jesus. And so this morning, if there be one who does not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, come now and give your life to Jesus. Just, just say, just say, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And he will do it. He will do it. And then you'll be that blood-washed believer. See, you can be the one that can turn your whole house around. You can be the one that can turn your whole family. One blood-washed believer in a family can turn a whole generation around. We talk often about generational curses, but there are generational blessings. There are generational blessings that come through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, is there one? Is there one? There may be one this morning who wants to be a member here at Greater St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church. Oh, we would love to have you here to be a member. Oh, yes. Oh, we are, we are, not, we are not a perfect church, but we're striving for perfection. We want to get better each and every day. Oh, God bless you. And we thank God for, for those, those friends who, who brought those, who told those to, to, to share this, this worship service, share the Bible study, share the church school. That's, that's, like, that's like bringing your friends to Jesus. God bless you for your faith, that you want to share your faith. God bless you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father God. Oh, we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. God, we thank you that you saw our greater need and you sent your son to save our souls. But Father God, we thank you for those who said, I want to be a part of say, Greater St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church. God bless them. Let us be that church without a spot or wrinkle. And Father God, we thank you for the offering that was given this day. Bless you, bless those who give. Bless them in their coming and bless them in their going. And we thank you now that when it's all said and done, all we want to hear is well done, our good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. I'm going to make it rule over many. It is in Jesus' name in which we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So now as, as we prepare for communion, we ask now that you get your elements Go ahead and open uh, the bread and the wine. And, and, and when I kneel and take my bread, you take yours. When I kneel and drink my wine, you drink yours. That way we'll be communing together. That's what God wants us to do as a body of believers. So now find your sacred place. Find your altar in the house. And we'll take communion together. Amen.
earnestly repent of your sins and in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking forth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God by meekly kneeling upon your knees. General confession. And we ask that everyone say it wherever you are. Almighty God, Father Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things and judge of all people. We acknowledge and bewail our most manifold sins and wickedness, which we have from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly the wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and heartfully sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive all that is past, and will grant thee hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, and who thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of these who heartfully repent and turn faith, true faith, turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us and pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Confirm our faith and strengthen us in all goodness and bring to us everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom new secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worldly magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meet and right in our bounded duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, therefore with angels and archangels, with all the companies of heaven, we loud and magnify thy holy name evermore, praising thee, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but thou art man of forth and great mercies that we are not worthy as much as to gather the crumbs from under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we may eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood for our sinful souls and bodies, may be cleansed by his death and washed through his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, and who thy tender mercy does give in thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our repentance, for our redemptions, who made their Father oblation of himself and offend a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and sufficient of his sins of the whole world and did institute in the holy gospel commanded us to continue the perpetual memories of that of his precious death upon coming again hear us O merciful father that we must humbly beseech thee and grant that we receive these creatures of bread and wine according to thy son Jesus Christ holy institution remembrance of his death and his passion that we will partake of the most blessed body and blood in whom in the same night when he was betrayed he, he took the bread and when he gave thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples saying take eat this is my body which was broken for you this do in remembrance of me and likewise after supper he took the cup 
And when he gave thanks, he said to them, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you the many remissions of your sin. Do this as often as you shall drink in remembrance of me. Amen. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was broken for me and for you. This is his precious blood that was spilled on Calvary's cross and it was placed on the right hand of the Father God Almighty. Place it on the mercy seat, shed for your sins and my sins. We drink it now. Let us pray the way he taught his disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as is it in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we give those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want us to know, church, that he did it all for us. As we stand now, thanking Jesus Christ for what he did on Calvary's cross. And that we remember this every first Sunday as we take part in the Eucharist, his body, his blood, as we take part in holy sacrament together. We thank you now. And our prayer is soon and very soon, we'll be in this place together, not virtually, but here together in the sanctuary to commune with each other and to commune with God, the benediction. Now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit root and about with you now and forevermore, let all the children of God say, Amen.
you for worshiping with us today. And as we close out our service today, we, until next time, may God continue to bless you and encourage you during the week. And may that word just continue to be a blessing to you and everyone you come in contact with. God bless you until next time. Greetings and just knowing the joy of Jesus. Folk have been asking, how do I give to Greater St. James in this time of transition? Well, there are, there are three different ways. The first way that you can give is electronically. When you go on our, our website, when you go on our Facebook page, you'll be able to see how you can give. You can take your electronic advices and give that way. Secondly, there is an address that you will find on our Facebook page. You can mail your offering in and we'll thank God for you. But thirdly, between the hours of 10 and 12 on Sunday morning, there'll be someone here to receive your offering. You just drive up under the canopy and someone will come out and there'll be security here to make sure your offering is secure and that you are secure. They'll come out and take your offering and you can drive right on. We thank you for whatever you give unto God. We thank you for how you bless this church and we pray that God continue to bless you. We thank you now. Be blessed and we look for you soon. Amen.